Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime, but kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Downtown between Brush Street and I-375. That's where we're located in the heart of Detroit at Ford Field, which first opened back in 2002. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us-against-the-world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be under the command of the former Florida State Seminole, the number one overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. If you just break it down in individual terms, he played really well last week. Zero interceptions, three touchdown passes. Not a whole lot more he could have done to win that game. But you know something that's funny when we talked to him, all he focused on were throws he missed, yeah. other opportunities that didn't get done. Good sign of a leader. Great sign of a leader because they didn't win, and that's all he cares about. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got a man that's caught, left sideline. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Play fake, Winston. It's caught inside the 25. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A big pickup of 38. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Now a handoff looking right. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Throwing on second and three. Winston looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Jordan Leggett, the target there, and it's third and short. And a peek now at the offense for Tampa Bay. And they come off a tough loss last week, and what's their reward? A second straight road game. Rarely are teams happy about scheduling. They're always calling the league office saying, how come we have this game and that game? But when you're coming off of a loss on the road and you go right into another one, and he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Trey Flowers, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe mm. a back, someone to help assist, because right now their quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember.
And he will score. Touchdown, Lions. In for the score as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown and a field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick, obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Single, single, slot, slot. Hey, you're on an Winston. And break. The tight end's got it. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. On third down, Winston. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Oh, they stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Ashawn Robinson there on the stop. Looking to throw on second down. Winston, pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Trey Flowers make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. Off the play fake. Winston airing this one out for Evans. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is a big arm guy who's learned how to temper some of his throws. Actually has added a lot more touch and accuracy as his career has gone along. Big time confidence in his arm though. Any throw you want, he can make it. On first and 10, Stafford. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw again. Stafford throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they've been very good this year against the pass, currently holding on to a top 10 ranking at number 10. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top 10 in the league against the pass, but the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB, they'd easily move into the top five. Now it's Stafford. 
That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Thought they were going to force a fourth down. Instead, P.I. gives him the first. And that's frustrating because you think you've taken them really deep into the count, haven't you? Instead, you've got to start all over. That can really, really be demoralizing. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of sea ball, get ball. Third and long at Stafford. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. It'll be a pickup of 16, but they'll remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, this crowd does not like that call. Understandable reaction from them. That's their team that the penalty's going against. But you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback. Jameis to throw it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 15 yards last play and 15 yards here this go around. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal to throw Winston. And he's got his tight end, Howard. It's a Buccaneer touchdown. O.J. Howard, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. A post to the tight end for six. Gosh, those guys are so tough to cover, aren't they? Just, just in general, tight ends running those patterns near the goal line. Because you have to decide how you want to treat them. Are they a wide receiver? Are they a big extra blocker on the field? Or are they a hybrid and caught in between? So are you going to use a linebacker? Are you going to use a safety? Are you going to even move a corner in if you're going to play nickel or dime defense? They usually win those matchups because they have an answer for all three of those positions. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away this is taken at his four and he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 
The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Back to throw, Stafford. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. This thrown quickly out to Jones. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized. Execute. Blitz coming, and down he goes. MJ Stewart, mainly known for his pass coverage, this time a sack. A few issues here on the offensive line. Apparently, he got sacked five times last week. They got to him here in the first quarter. And I would think that running the ball would be paramount here because it's a different team they're facing, but they watch the film as well. So they'll take many of those same principles and try and apply them in this game to see if they fixed what was wrong with them in the last game. And James has it. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Following the penalty, it's Johnson. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. The numbers a week ago for Johnson. 13 carries, 51 yards, and a touchdown. They've won two straight games, and they've done it with the running game as the focal point of their offense. So in this contest, I don't think about doing anything else. I continue to ride the hot hand that I've established and lead with the runners. Stafford throws complete to Galladay. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. So negative yardage, a loss of three on second down, and that leads to a tough third down call. Now Stafford, and that is incomplete. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Bring it. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Winston from the gun on third down. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. 
Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Stafford going to give this one off to Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Here's Stafford. Caught by Jones. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 yards there and a line first down. Play action. Stafford. And that'll be incomplete. Maybe a little over-anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. It wasn't really confident. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like It's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. The Lions on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This from 54 yards away. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And the Buccaneers defense holds, and they get the football back. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. 
And an alley to run. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So, first and 10 now from the 30. Let's go, D. Tighten up. Let's go, D. Winston, a handoff. This is Jones. He was brought down by Devon Kennard. On second down, it's Jones. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. The Bucks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and two. Here's Winston. He's got Evans. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. A familiar ring to that one. Winston to Evans for the Buccaneer first. Jameis now 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. From the red zone now, Winston. And this is caught by Evans. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the 1. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And that loss of yards there is not just on him. It's on the guys blocking for him. I mean, they're supposed to create some type of space or at least get a stalemate. They end up letting them through and they ended up tackling him for a loss. Back to the ground. This time it's Anderson. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Here's Winston toward the end zone, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Lion defense able to come up there with a goal line stand. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 13. They begin the drive with Johnson. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. On first down, Stafford here. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Now a play fake, and it's Stafford. Out to the left there, and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. Stafford now to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? 
Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. And here now the putter, Martin, booming this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Bucs offense set to begin their next possession. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. Watch a nine. Watch Now it's a bootleg with Winston. He completes it to Evans. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Watch tight end. Watch tight end. Tight end's right. Tight end's right. Now on second and 13. Winston. That is incomplete. The Bucks on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. They go play action. Winston. He finds his target. It's Evans. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 33 yards that time. Well, one thing's for sure. They're going to have to come up with something at halftime because he is absolutely roasting them right now. They're going to go through the whole litany of things, changing coverages, you know, what are we going to do to put a man on him? The big thing to me is treat it like a good pitcher treats pitching a game. Change your timing. Change your location. So sometimes you're up on him, sometimes you're back. Just change up the looks that he sees and make him just a little bit more hesitant. Roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that'll make it second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out penalty against him and oh it'll be intercepted Darius Slay with a pick and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back well it's third and long and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively but this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag they're going to keep chucking it and this time it results in an interception And Detroit getting set to go now. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Throwing is Stafford. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Stafford, and that is incomplete. But, partner, anytime someone tells me that fundamentals are leaving the game, I'm going to show them this play because they couldn't get to the passer. So what do you have to do? Get your hands up in the passing lane, and they batted it away on a third down attempt. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. 
Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. And he's racking up the yardage. You see the catches uh, defensively. What do you do here to stop a guy like this? You keep trying to change things up because nothing is really working. Whether you have a man on him, two people, you're showing different types of zone defenses combined with man-to-man -man coverages. Try and change things up and eventually get to the point where maybe you put enough people on him, they won't throw the ball to him anymore. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Winston fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Now Winston looking for his running back, and he's got him. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now it's right. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Lions will take over. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He only has a single solo carry, one. Numero uno, second quarter. They need to get in the ball more, don't they? I'm not the greatest statistician in the world. Yeah, you are. But a back like that with only one carry kind of takes me back to college in the classroom. Not enough evidence to declare what you should do the rest of the game. Give him the ball some more and find out. Will they incorporate him? We'll find out. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in week six. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. And yeah, nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just go, past the 30-yard line. Meanwhile, taking a look at what's going on in KC, and it's the Titans who are off to the early lead in that ball game. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. Johnson, and an alley to run! And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. Faking the give to Johnson. Now it's Stafford. He completes it to Jones. That one covers 29 yards. First down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. The intended target, TJ Hawkinson, but it'll be second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Here's Stafford. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 14. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. And this play goes nowhere, losing yardage back to the 15. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. 
And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield, and he's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. The former first-round pick, Vernon Hargraves, the one who was there defensively. Throwing on third down, Stafford. Complete to Jones. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And we shift the spotlighting Mike Evans. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Damon Harrison able to record his fifth sack of the season. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. So they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. And to give this time to the tailback. And I don't know if he made it out of the end zone. No signal. Yes, it's a safety. So troubles here offensively. I tell you, the noise in this dome, that has got to make it harder for these guys to hear. Sometimes I find myself shouting up here. But you're right. If you can't communicate well or get off the snap count properly, it can cause big problems. And this qualifies as a big problem. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10, right at the 30. Running from the gun, Johnson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. On second down now, McFarland, and he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage with a flag down here to Booth. So they may back up further. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. On second down, it's Johnson. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. Give him four yards there, but still in a big hole. Third and long. Third and long, it's Stafford. Looking downfield for Joe. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. And a big 32-yard play on third. That's just flat out a beautiful throw right there. It was a rope. That's maybe the speed you would see on a slant, but he threw that downfield with that kind of pace. Now, if he throws that one with any type of arc, puts a little air under it, that play doesn't happen. He had to fire it in there, and he did exactly that. On first down, McFarland. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. On second and a yard. Stafford. James has got it. Complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. 
Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So that's going to move them half the distance. First of all, you can't jump in this situation, but think about your play calling now. Could easily change what you want to do and maybe make things a little bit easier. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. After a play like that, it should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. You can already start to hear this crowd. They're saying, go, go for it. Yeah, have we ever been at a game where you've heard the crowd go, field goal, field goal? No, I have not. That's a good point. Yeah, they always want to go for it, and I think they've got the right idea right now. The way they've moved the ball in this drive, I wouldn't stop that momentum. Go get it. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their 25 yard line. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Jameis to throw it. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. Now they'll run it on the toss. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. From the 41, Winston firing quickly here, and that's complete. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. The Detroit offense ready to begin their drive. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. And Johnson lost the football. It's loose, poked down, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they have the football and will take over at the 24-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. A look at Jameis Winston now as he gears up to lead this offense again. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. On second and 11 now. Winston. This will be caught inside the 10. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. 
A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year as his guys have cut the lead down to two. And Charles, when you catch that toss going right or left, really, but right in this instance, do you go straight for the pylon? Is that where you're going? Well, typically you want to try and maneuver people a little bit so you have some space to get to the pylon. So I want to make sure I try and move them a little bit to the inside, and in this case, to the left, so I can get to the right side and get to that pylon and wink at it as I go by. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Let's go! The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. They'll run on first down. It's Johnson, and he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Again, it's Johnson. It's a gain of three on what will be the final play of this third quarter. Back now at Ford Field. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. The Lions on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and four. Here's Stafford, and he'll find Galladay, that's complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. And they just keep marching right along, first down on a pickup of eight there. On first down, it's Johnson. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. Stafford on first down. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Back to throw, Stafford. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. Throwing on third and long. Stafford, that's to his running back, carry on Johnson. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And a kick by Elliott is good. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. The Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Well, NFL quarterbacks have learned the hard way. You're not going to get rich thrown against this guy. He's definitely too good. And this is now his second interception of the ball game. And if I'm running the offense, I've got to tell my guys, you've got to go work on the other corner. 
So here are the Lions to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. After the interception, here's Stafford. And he rifles one incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Here's Johnson. He's been busy this afternoon. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. 51 and a half, 51. And let's pin the mirrors back. Throwing on third and long. Stafford looking downfield for... And he has his receiver. That's Jones. Lions Jim, Jim, touchdown. Marvin Jones, his second touchdown on the season. And thanks to the interception, the Lions offense cashes in with six. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. That's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, <laughs> man. Yard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Elliott good on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Jameis Winston and the rest of the box set to begin this next drive. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. Now throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's going to let this one go deep. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. First down for the Lions on a nice pickup of 18 yards. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Now Johnson. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Stafford looking to throw on third and one. And he fires one, but incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup. Bounce didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. 
to throw again on second down. Winston, wide open receiver complete. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. First down, Winston. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. No gain, and it's second down. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Here's Winston. Caught by Jones. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. We'll check on his status when we get back. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. On play action, Winston. Looking downfield for Godwin. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. The Bucks go for it. It's Winston. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up. And, oh, Jameis intercepted a third time. Picked off by Justin Coleman. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, on fourth down, that turned out like a punt. Maybe he was better defensively there just to knock it down. And you know they go over those situations. All right, fourth down, where's the ball? Where would we get the ball? But instinct takes over, and when it's in the air, they just go and get it. So it's hard to get on him for intercepting it, but the smart play would have been what you suggested. Knock it down and take over in a deeper position. Back onto the field comes the offense. Let's take a closer look at Carrion Johnson. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Throwing again on second down. Stafford got his man complete over the middle. That's James. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. On the ground, this is Johnson. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. On third down, Stafford. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Winston and the Bucks take over now first and 10, just shy of the 30. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Winston. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Later. 
Seven yards on the play. And just like that, it's third down. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll go with Jones. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. On first and 10, Winston. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Here's Winston. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions. That confident veneer that you have is chipped away a little bit. Maybe a little bit gun-shy throwing it around. Yeah, under-throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions may be in the back of his mind. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Trey Flowers, and it'll be a turnover on downs. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Here's a 20th carry for Johnson. Now the Bucks gonna use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down and they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. They go to Johnson again. The Bucks gonna go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. Yeah, boy, from up here, I don't think Johnson got there. No, he did not. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now no kick from 50 plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome, you'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They were all county, all state, at other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. Winston to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. To throw, Winston. And that will be incomplete. They're going to try for it on fourth. Winston stays out there. Now Winston on fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Lions will get the football back in terrific field position. 
Well, that's the fourth time that they've tried to go for it on fourth down. They've only converted once, Charles. And obviously not a good percentage. And if you're going to go for it on fourth down, you think that you've got the right play dialed up. You can't be stopped. Your momentum's going to keep going. But one for four, that tells you that you need to look at things in a different way, and you need to tip your cap to the defense. They've done a great job. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. So this one's over. It's a win for the Detroit Lions, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for Detroit, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, for the Bucs, they drop below 500 to 2 and 3 with a loss and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week